Good evening once again. This is Dr. Mike. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat, mga kababayan. So, kumusta po ang araw ninyo sa lahat po ng ating mga subscribers, mga viewers sa buong mundo na nanonood lagi sa atin. Maraming maraming salamat po. So, sandali lang nga, titignan lang natin. So, ayan, meron na tayo sa ating uh, channel. Tinitignan ko po kasi sa cellphone ko rin. If you have questions, feel free uh, sa... Kung related po or, or interesado po kayo sa topic natin, please uh, do share sa mga friends po ninyo. And the question ko po mga kababayan is, ilan po ba sa inyo ang nagkakaroon ng problema tuwing uh, dinadat na ng buwan ng dalaw? Sino po sa inyo ang nagkakaroon minsan ng heavy bleeding or minsan naman po sobrang sakit? Uh, or maaring sa mga kababayan natin dito sa Hong Kong, nagkaroon na po ng problema na tinatawag na mayoma or yung tinatawag na uterine uh, fibroids, or bukol sa matres. Yun po ang pag-uusapan natin ngayong gabi. If you have questions, feel free uh, i-chat lang po ninyo yung questions ninyo because our guest expertise po niya ito, and then we'll try to answer yung po mga questions nyo. Lahat po ng mga viewers natin, maraming maraming salamat po. Mga friends natin, particularly mga friends natin sa Malaysia na laging sumusubaybay sa atin, Uh, si Sweet Honey, si Miss Lourdes, ang friends natin sa Japan, uh, si Miss Delia, tapos mga friends, mga loyal friends natin nandito sa Hong Kong, sa Philippines. And recently, sobrang dami po, mamaya i-grid ko po kayo. Sabihin nyo rin po sa ating chat box kung taga saan po kayo para malaman ko. O ayan, may mga nakatune in na sa atin ngayong gabi. Maraming maraming salamat po. Yung iba nagtatrabaho pa, yung mga taga Hong Kong, hindi ba tapos ang kanilang mga uh, gawaing bahay? Uh, sa kanilang mga employers. Pero yung pong mga taga-Pilipinas, ayan, nakikinig na sila sa atin ngayong gabi. Maraming maraming salamat po. Let me uh, ask this question po sa inyo. Ilan po sa tingin ninyo sa mga kababaihan ang merong mayoma? Paano po ba kaya uh, nadidetect ito? Or ano po ba ang mga simptomas nito? Ang pong mayoma po ba ay pwedeng magkaroon ng, uh, pwede po ba siyang tumuloy bilang isang cancer or ito po ay isang benign uh, problem. So ito po yung pag-uusapan natin ngayong gabi. But uh, before that, let me introduce our guest. Okay? Siguro po recently nakita nyo yung picture na pinost ko nung ako ay medical student. So isa po siya doon. Okay? So siya po ay aking classmate. Siya po ang kasama ko sa aking uh, rotation, sa aming rotation ng almost one year na nagkakamali. And I'm very proud to announce she's the newly appointed chair Department of Obstetric and Gynecology at the Medical City Clark. And she's affiliated sa mga hospital na ito, Angeles University Foundation Medical Center and other hospital in Angeles City and City of San Fernando. And Also, she's the assistant training officer ng AUFMC. So without any further ado, my beautiful friend, okay, Dr. Gina G. Masangkay. Hi! Hello, good evening po. <laughs> good evening, hindi ka pa rin nagbabago talaga. <laughs> After ilang, ilang years na hindi tayo nagkita uh, since uh, nag-graduate tayo. And I'm so proud of you. Lahat ng mga classmates natin, particularly you, na, syempre, sama kita <laughs> <laughs> sa group natin, sa lahat ng rotations natin, di ba? Uh, and then we have so many memories uh, during those times. What, what do you still recall? Ano na recall mo during our medicine years? Actually, yung sa rotations natin, syempre mahirap, di ba? But, you know, uh, when every end of rotation, we always have like a small gathering. And then, syempre, ikaw, you're so talented in what you're doing. I'm, I'm happy for you also for where you are now. Uh, palagi tayo nagpapaparty. As in, we were, di ba, kainan, tawanan, games, di ba? Th those are memorable times kasi kahit toxic na toxic tayo sa rotation, in the end, we even, you know, you make us laugh. You make it You know, you make it light at the end, but at least, you know, keep going tayo. Saya lang, di ba? Kaya nga sarap na din na duty, di ba? Because I remember, during those times, ikaw yung kasama namin na 
every duty na kasama ka, as in mega yung pagkain natin. <laughs> yeah. Ayaw magutom. <laughs> Kasi baka po hindi po naiintindihan ng mga viewers natin. Because every time that we have a rotation, minsan po hindi po kami nakakakain on time. Diba? Most of the time, hindi tayo kumakain on time. So, si Dr. Gina po, ang ginagawa niya, parang may catering lagi. <laughs> Papadala ng pagkain. <laughs> And so, ayun, 24-7 ang pagkain. Pag-duty kami in particular. But anyway, kumusta na? Ano nang balita? Okay lang. Hanging in there. How are you with the pandemic? Oh, ito. At least na bumaba ng cases namin. We, could, we can go out naman, but we, are, we need to protect ourselves and uh, social distancing. And also, bawal lang mass gathering. Only specific numbers muna. Yes. But the restaurants It- open. Uh, dati kasi puro uh, takeaway halos. Uh-oh. But my question, ano, how come OBGYN ang field na pinuntahan mo? Actually, I wanted surgery. But sabi nung dad ko at that time, mm, di pang babae ang surgery. Uh-oh. And then I remember, uh, I was into sexual, ano, counseling sa college, yung mga uh, sexually transmitted infections, you know, you go to the fraternity house, ganyan-ganyan. Uh, you, you lecture sa mga freshmen, ganyan-ganyan, about uh, sexual ano, uh, infections and then how to prevent it, like adolescent health, mm-hmm. sexual health. And so, when I went into med school, parang ah, gusto ko mag-surgery, di ba? But ayaw ng dad ko at that time. So, I thought na, ah, sige, pwede naman yung ano, women's health, medyo focus siya, tsaka I'm a woman. So, in the process, makakatulong ako sa sarili ko, tsaka sa ibang tao, di ba? So wonderful. And by the way, mga viewers po, <laughs> na nanonood sa atin ngayong gabi, ang father po ni Dr. Gina <laughs> is a famous uh, doctor also in town, si Dr. Masangkay. Uh, naging teacher natin din siya, right? Pa, ano yes. Si- going, outgoing during during our time. But anyway, ang topic natin ngayon, Dr. Gina, is all about myoma. And sa ating mga kababayan dito sa Hong Kong, not just probably sa Hong Kong, sa ibang mundo rin, na nanonood sa atin ngayong gabi, is uh, this myoma, minsan kasi hindi uh, accidental lang pagkakadiscover ng mga kababaihan. But would you want to tell us something about the incidents or the statistics Uh, sino ba ang nagkakaroon ng myoma? Actually, yung myoma kasi, it's like a tumor na tumutubo sa doob ng ano, matris natin or yung uterus, no? Uh, yung myoma kasi, it's actually more common. It just so happens na in the past, hindi siya masyadong nadidetect kasi it's really asymptomatic, no? Unless talagang malaki siya. It's common in the childbearing age, no? Yung reproductive age natin, kung saan mataas tayong mag- mga anak at saka yung hormone levels natin. And then usually, sa National uh, Institute of Health, no? They're saying that 20 to 85% of women by the age of 50 actually get diagnosed with a form of myoma, no? Um, but usually, of that percentage, 25 to 30 percent are only symptomatic that they actually need some kind of treatment. So medyo common din siya. It just so happens na not everybody knows they have it. Oh, okay. So ayan mga kababayan ha, at least na naiintindihan niyo po ngayon. But before we move forward sa ating mga discussions, mga questions natin, ano ba ang mayoma? Lagi na rin naririnig yan. Oo, nabanggit natin yung incidents, nabanggit natin yung statistics from National Health. Pero ano nga ba ito? Yung myoma, otherwise known medically, no? Leomyoma or uterine fibroma is usually a tumor. Hindi naman siya cancerous, but it's a tumor na nag-grow sa muscle layer ng matris natin. Usually kasi, what it does is, it's it's a growth of our stem cells na medyo bumubukol siya. So, ang nangyayari is, um, slow growing siya, sometimes super liit, na hindi mo nakikita, but nandyan siya. And then sometimes, super laki naman niya, na nafe-feel mo parang may bola sa loob. So parang ano, parang buntis din si si babae o si mama. Yes. Oo. That could be a symptom. Oo, na malaki yung puson. Malaki siya, lalaki din siya niya. Oo. Mm-hmm. 
ano nga ba ang mga sintomas ng, ng mayoma? Kasi yan ang ma- ma- laging tatanungin ng ating mga kababayan. Kung alam nila ang mayoma, ito pala. Ano ang sintomas niya? Um, depende talaga kung ano siya, malaki or maliit yung size niya. But the most common complication or symptoms na yung mga babae na pumupunta sa doctor is because they're heavy menstrual bleeding, no? Or pain during menstruation, no? Or yung uh, those m- mahaba yung mens niya more than seven days siya, no? So usually those are the most common. But yung mga hindi common na baka na experience nila noon pa na after ng anak ng isang beses, ganon ganon yung yung frequent urination no at saka yung parang constipated or feeling of fullness you know yung uh, sa pelvic area and then there's also yung kung nag nakisiping sila ni Mr. sometimes may pain na nararamdaman and like i mentioned kanina na sometimes biglaan na ay parang may bola parang lumalaki yung puson may matigas na may feel kung mag lay flat siya no ganun and then sometimes may lower back pain may leg pains din and then yung mga severity naman is usually ano um anemia secondary to the blood loss okay. ganun so ayan mga kababayan po ha pag nakakaramdam na po kayo ng heavy menstrual bleeding tapos painful siya plus yung menstrual period mo is more than a week at saka po yung iba binanggit ni Dr. Gina, kailangan nyo na po magpatingin. Because some of our patient may just ignore itong nararamdaman nilang ito. And uh, how about the causes? A- ano ang usual causes ng, uh, ng mayoma? Actually, there's counting scientific evidence sa uh, actual pinpointed cause. no? But there are factors that they say na plays a role in the cause of myoma, especially yung sa growth. So usually hormonal, yung progesterone and estrogen, which is common sa mga babahiyan pag reproductive age level tayo. Okay. Oh. Yes. And then yung isa, hindi natin siya madideny, no? yung genetics natin. Kasi it runs in your family, hereditary siya. No? Uh, those are some of the causes na most common na inaano nila, yung nag- what triggers a woman to have a myoma. Oh. Yung risk factor. Factor. So, reproductive age group nila, kung nandoon sila, so malaki ang chance nila na magkaroon ng mayoma, Okay, particularly, yan nga, between 30 years old to 40 years old yan, mas nasa reproductive. Plus, kung merong genetic, so ibig sabihin kung ang mother or mga auntie, etc., meron silang mga mayoma, nagkaroon ng mayoma, malaki din ang chance na si kapatid na babae magkaroon din, parang ganon. Oo, parang sinasabi sa mga study sa research na three times higher on risk than the average woman pag meron kang history sa family. In terms of the risk factors, uh, Dr. Gina, ano yung mga risk factors uh, usually? Common ba ito sa mga Pilipino? Common ba ito sa mga whites? Or mga, uh-huh. Aside from the age at saka yung hereditary factor, no? uh, about the races, uh, it's more common sa mga African-Americans. No? Uh, they have more history of symptomatic na mayomas. No? Uh, another thing is that it's very rare daw sa Asians, but lately, no, with the advent of of the technology we have, mas nadetect sila ngayon. At saka, for me, for my personal experience, yung diet change ng mga Filipinos to Western diet, medyo, that's also a risk factor na hindi natin control, which is obesity. Yung obesity kasi, uh, it, it serves as a 2 to 3 percent higher risk than average woman if you eat more processed meats, more red meats, less vegetables and fruits, tsaka yung alcohol drinking, yung mga ganon. Those things, they also increase the risk of developing, you know, mayumas. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, yan ha, mga kabayan. <laughs> yan po, uh, ano ha, mga Good time. <laughs> so, process na ano, wag po kayong matakot. Kasi some of our kababayas, baka matakot sila sa discuss natin. Uh, mm-hmm. Mas maganda pong malaman ninyo, you need to educate yourself para po alam natin ang gagawin natin. As Dr. Gina mentioned, it's non-cancerous. Hindi po siya cancerous. Di ba? Uh, yeah, yung po mga questions po ninyo, sabihin lang po ninyo mga questions nyo dyan. Mamaya po, uh, tatanungin natin. 
si Dr. Uh, Gina. Dr. Gina, how about nabanggit na natin ang uh, what is a myoma, ang causes, ang risk factors, ang mga complications nito because some of the women, medyo takot nga, ano ang possible na mangyayari? Ano yung mga complications kung hindi nila papaalis o kung pababayaan na lang si myoma ng dyan? Majority of the time, Doc, ano siya, benign or non-cancerous at saka asymptomatic. No? Sometimes kasi hindi siya nakikita agad and then when they have complications na sinasabi mo na medyo dun nakakatakot, no? If hindi ka nagpapa-check up then all of a sudden sobrang heavy ng menstruation mo, hindi mo alam, uh, masakit na yung ulo from anemia and everything, no? Your health is deteriorating na every month pag nagme-mens ka sobrang haba and heavy, which is the most common, no? Ang nangyayari, sir, is uh, anemia, mm-hmm. fatigue, You know, and then loss of the nutrients. So yung health mo nagde-deteriorate. And then another complication is if you're trying to get pregnant. No, Usually okay. kasi uh, if it goes undetected, depending on the size, depending on the location, pwedeng mahihirapan kang magbuntis. But if ever nagbuntis ka and then nakita sa ultrasound mo, ay may mayuma ka, yun din may complications. Hindi naman yung mag-e-end yung bun- pagbubuntis mo, bawal magbuntis pag may mayuma. It's just careful watching pag buntis na may myoma. Kasi once again, hormonally related yung cause. So, if mataas ang hormones natin during pregnancy, lalaki siya. So, yung complications doon is preterm delivery or yung baby mo suwi siya, hindi siya, hindi una yung ulo. So, the chances of cesarean section is higher. no And then, hindi ka makakapag normal delivery. And then, yung preterm labor is the most common. And then, yung, yung mahirap kang magbuntis. So, yun. Yun, yun mga common complications uh, if ever. And then, And also another thing is yung mga pressure symptoms. Like, sobrang laki na and all of a sudden, constipated ka palagi. And then, uh, yung pag-ihi mo, kasi sobrang laki niya, dinadaganan niya yung pantog mo. Di ba? So, there's those kinds of symptoms that are related to the myoma, but not necessarily na, ano, bad. Oo. Ayan, ang daming natututunan naman ng mga kapabayan natin. Mga OFWs po, ha? Sana po magpatingin po kayo. At least, gano'n mga kadalas dapat magpatingin, uh, Dr. Gina, na mga kababayan natin, for sure, na-alarma yan. Wala man silang nararamdaman, pero gusto nila magpatingin uh, para makita kung uh, magpa-utras. Gano'n ba dapat, uh, ano yan, every year ba yan or every two years, paano? Well, actually, Doc, ano, dapat for every woman, syempre, yung katawan natin medyo exposed siya sa mga, ano, especially sa childbirth and everything, no? Not only when you're pregnant should you see a doctor. You actually should have like a health wellness check yearly, di ba? Sa, sa mga ibang sakit, like yung blood mo, yung, yung, yung fats mo, yung, yung mga lipids, yung kinakain mo, yung diet mo, para at least makita sa blood work mo. But essentially, so women's health, which is sa matris natin, sa breast natin, dapat yearly siya. Um, especially pap smear. Maraming women out there na takot pa rin magpatingin unless needed or unless may nararamdaman. Which a lot of our diseases are preventable mm-hmm. if lang magpa-check up ka. So, sana, no, uh, yung message ko <laughs> is... <laughs> Don't be afraid na magpa-check up because knowing is better. Kasi you're working so hard, no? For your life, for your livelihood, for your family. And then hindi ka magpapa-check up na all of a sudden, shucks, may sakit na ako. Hindi na, hindi na natin maaagapan, di ba? Or mahihirapan na tayo. So dapat yearly minimum, yearly pap smear. Mm-hmm. Oo. And going back to Mayoma, and ang question ng ating mga kababayan is, how can we prevent? Is there a way that we could prevent prevent uh, myeloma. Same thing well, for estrogen or related just a hormone related just a genetics. Uh-oh. Yes, Doc. Remember, kanina you asked me what the cause is. Mm-hmm. Eh, di ba? Yung hereditary, hindi natin siya mapapalitan. So, in uh-huh. essence, hindi siya talaga preventable, no? But, uh, we could Diba sa genes natin, may on and off button. Diba? Your mom has diabetes, pwedeng ikaw din magka-diabetes. But if you watch your diet, hindi ka magkaka-diabetes, diba? So, prevention-wise, um, you could stop it from going bigger or developing by 
ano, by having a healthy lifestyle. Kung alam mo, meron ang nanay mo, kung alam mo, meron ang relative mo, and if you know your your weight is kind of too much for your normal weight, then, you know, those are factors that you can change to prevent the development or severity of myoma. So, ayan na, mga kababayan, na, para alam natin uh, kung paano. Sabi nga ni Dr. Gina, walang prevention because you cannot control yung hereditary genetics at the same time yung hormone level natin. But how do we diagnose? Paano ba? Para lang maintindihan ng ating mga kababayan kasi maaari natatakot sila baka kung anong gawin sa sa examining table pag uh, inaano yung myoma. Oh, paano ba dinadiagnose ang myoma? Well, kung may symptoms ka dun sa sinabi natin kanina, uh, more or less po, is, uh, pwede silang pumunta sa doctor. Usually, sometimes, kung wala symptoms and then uh, they went to the doctor for a pap smear, no? yearly yon or every six months, pwede. Uh, a pap smear or may infection sa ihe, no? usually, it's a check siya ng doctor. Usually, we call it a pelvic examination. With the pelvic examination, sometimes, incidentally, may nakakapa. And then, usually, the first thing we will order is an ultrasound. So, nadadiagnose sila sa ultrasound. So, usually, yun ang first. And then, from there, if, say, nahihirapan or kailangan more information, there's other diagnostics na mas heavier. You know, like MRI, history, stereoscopy, yung mga ganun na high-tech na ano, <laughs> medyo, but sa ultrasound, basic ultrasound, nagda-diagnose na siya. Oo. Pag in-ultrasound ba, kasi tanong ng mga kababayan natin, usually yan, kung hindi pa siya nag-asawa, okay, uh, anong klaseng ultrasound ang gagawin? Compare dun sa mga nag- nanganak na. Kasi, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Siyempre, ano, depende on the size and what they see. Pag hindi pa nanganak, usually most of the time, pelvic. Yung, yung sa chan siya, yung dinadaan siya sa chan or dun sa poson area, yung transducer, sa labas lang siya on a full bladder. But kaming mga OB sometimes, kahit walang contact or walang ano, nanganak, uh, usually we ask na kung pwedeng rectal ang transvaginal. Only because um, it's closer to to the source of what you're looking at, di ba? So, medyo mas makikita yung ovario, mas makikita yung ano ng matres dun sa transrectal. So, parang transvaginal na din siya. Ah, yan. Kami natututunan ng ating mga kababayan. Dinadagsa tayo ng mga tanong dito. Sige po, natanungin ko po mamaya yan. And, ito na. Na-diagnose, confirm, positive, mayoma siya. Okay? And you mentioned kanina na iba't ibang lugar siya na pwede. Oo. And anong usual treatment natin? Uh, usually, depending kung ano yung symptoms mo. Uh, but first and foremost, what we do is medical treatment. Medical. No? medical treatment or watchful, careful watchful treatment where watchful waiting tayo na uh, start na ng diet, huwag masyadong kumain ng processed meat, red meat, ganon, para lang hindi siya sobrang laki. Remember, it's slow growing. But if you feed it and feed it, Siyempre, mas mabilis siyang lumaki. Like when you're pregnant, it'll get uh, no, bigger faster because of the hormone levels. No? Um, so the thing is that we could do medications like to shrink it. No? To shrink it lang bago ka maoperahan kung sobrang laki. And then, depende kung ano yung cause. Like I told uh, kanina, di ba? Heavy menstrual bleeding can cause anemia. So every month, anemic ka. That's not good on your body. So yung treatment done would be to stop it, uh, to find out where it's located, if it's inside the matris, and that's why you're bleeding so much, kasi nandun siya sa lining kung saan ka dumudugo every month, tanggalin siya. Okay. And then pwedeng hormonal din. It's not to shrink the myoma, but it's to control the, the complication of the bleeding. Para medyo hindi ka palaging anemic and then yung quality of life mo hindi siya nagsasuffer every month for one week kasi, you know, you're so anemic, right? And then also another thing is oral contraceptives, no? Oral contraceptives is something also to control the bleeding. Not to shrink it, not to get rid of it. It's just to control the bleeding and the symptoms. And then may, may ano, yung, I don't know kung marami sa inyong nakarinig na ng progesterone 
only IUD or intrauterine device, no? Uh, Linalagay siya for heavy menstrual bleeding. So as you can see, myoma, most of the time, heavy menstrual bleeding siya. So, so yun. I and then, if sober love, dami, and then may edad ka na, ayaw mo na magkaanak, or sobrang laki ng matris mo, uh, pwede siyang liitin, no? May surgery, no? There's the traditional myomectomy na tatanggalin kung gusto mong i-preserve yung matris, or may yung tatanggalin lahat, yung ovary mo, yung matris mo, everything. So, wala nang baby nun, no? Depende kung gusto mo pang magkaanak. And then, the non-invasive or minimally invasive, um, the new techniques, no? Palagi tayong nag invent ng bagong techniques sa medical field, no? So, yung non-invasive, para siyang less suturing, less less pain, you could go the back to work faster, yung mga ganon, yung quality of life mo, hindi siya super magsasuffer, no? Uh, there's a minimal laparoscopy where myomectomy, may laparoscopy hysterectomy, meron din uh, non-invasive talaga, no sutures, no cutting, it's called high food. That's the latest treatment. It's called the high intensity focused ultrasound. Para siyang MRI na focused dyan sa mass, liliit so yun yun ang latest ngayon <laughs> yes and for sure uh, gusto ng mga kababayan natin yung ganyan procedure uh, yes. and paano yung mga uh, mothers na menopause na pero nandyan, nandyan yung papabayaan na lang ba yun um, usually, uh, diba, it's hormonally, in, uh, ano, and then it's more common sa 30 to 40, and then peak at 50. Pag menopause, usually it shrinks. Thanks. Unless super lucky niya, and then magpipain siya, then tatanggalin. But usually, depending on the location, the symptoms, kung wala naman, at saka lumiliit din siya, pinapabayaan na lang po. Oh. How about those hindi pa nanganak, accidental na na-discover siya, uh, pero gusto niya mang, mga anak pa, may magkakaroon pa rin siya ng baby medyo uh, we need to know uh, ano ang ano natin doon actually no having a myoma depending on the location can interfere with pregnancy especially kung submucous siya usually sa mga specialist na reproductive endocrinologist or reproductive medicine uh, pag submucous siya or sa loob ng matres siya and then it's causing a lot of bleeding usually tanatanggal siya muna if repeated pregnancy loss siya. But kung say may mayoma na siya sa loob and then buntis siya, careful watching na lang tayo that there's a chance na medyo mag-placenta abrupt siya, mag preterm delivery, or mag-pregnancy loss siya. But in essence, having a mayoma na bago ka mag you have the option of getting treated para successful ang pregnancy mo. Oh, so ayan. Ito naman, dumako naman tayo sa mga myths or facts. Uh, usually kasi maraming mga kababaihan ang ang daming tanong-tanong. Tatanong sa kapitbahay nila, nagtatanong kung ano. At minsan bali-bali ang mga informations. Okay? Ito ang mga questions na to. Maari yung ibang questions kanina na sagot na natin. Yung iba, maari tignan natin. Uh, sabi dito, myomas are cancerous. So, hindi. Usually, they're benign. They're not cancerous. But there's like this rare na less, very, it's like less than 1 in 1,000 percent na pwede siyang maging cancerous and it's called leiomyosarcoma. But if you already have a pre-existing sarcoma, they say it doesn't come from a pre-existing sarcoma. So, parang hindi naman siya common. So, very, very rare. Okay. If you have myomas, you can get pregnant or stay pregnant. Like kanina, diba? We're saying na you oh. can get pregnant. And yes, you can not stay pregnant. Depende kung location-wise, no? Depende, careful watching lang siya. And also, depende kung saan siya. Yung complications sa uh, staying pregnant would be the preterm labor, the recurrent pregnancy loss, the placenta previa. And not just labor, yung panganganak mo, medyo iniingatan din yon na baka mas cesarean section ka kasi it's six times parang higher risk pag may mayoma ka na mas cesarean ka because baka i-block niya yung daanan ni baby or you see baby suwi siya. Uh -oh. That's what the complications of pregnancy deliver. Uh -oh. Another one, once removed, pag tinanggal na natin ng mayoma, is there a possibility na babalik siya? Meron well, 
Actually, Doc, um, sometimes kasi hindi lang siya one solitary, one solitary myoma, no? Usually, sometimes it's madami siya, no? It's within our muscles. But di ba, sometimes kasi parang yung mga ibang cases na, ay, yung matris tinubuan ng myoma, yung iba-iba sa different places. And they don't all grow at the same time. So, if you take one out, baka may maliit na maliit nandun na, mukhang nag-regrow siya. In actuality, nandun na yon ngayon lang siya lumalaki. Remember, they're slow-growing. Uh-huh. Unless talagang, ano sila, hormonally, ano. Mm-hmm. And uh, sabi natin nga kanina, mayumas can present heavy bleeding and pain. Oo. Yes. And, okay. So, if untreated, mayumas, they will continue to grow and grow. In, well, remember, they're slow-growing. Yeah, slow-growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, more commonly, they're slow-growing. So, yes, they will continue to grow. Monitor lang at saka yung hormones mo. Remember, our body fats are, are ano, low hormones also. They convert to low hormone. <laughs> so, kung medyo obese tayo, parang may excess estrogen tayo. Yung mga hormones. Mga kababayan nating nanonood ngayon, kung <laughs> medyo may kalakihan tayo or obese, uh, try to uh, mag-diet po tayo. <laughs> <laughs> may always can cause infertility. Like uh, before, yung mga recurrent pregnancy loss, depending on the location. Like, if it's also if the myoma is blocking the fallopian tube opening, di ba yung fertilization dun sa fallopian tube, then magta-travel back out. Uh-uh. It could, it, it, parang hindi pa pasok yung sperm para hindi mag-fertilize. So yes, it depends sa location and ano, gano'n siya kalaki. Mm-hmm. But the exciting part, nadako tayo sa mga questions from the viewers. <laughs> okay. From the viewers, humanda po kayo. Ito yung mga tanong ninyo. And if you have still questions, please uh, tell us, write your questions. And also, uh, please don't forget po to like, share, and subscribe sa channel po natin para sa mga susunod na videos. Oh, ang daming comments. Maraming daw silang natutunan, Dr. Gina. <laughs> Thank you. Maraming salamat po. May nanonood sa atin si John Lloyd Ortinella from Mindanao. May nanonood from Mindanao sa atin. Wow. Oh, at saka si Maxine Antonet ng taga Mindanao po sila. Okay? Ito, sabi niya na operahan daw siya uh, recently and the pain, sobrang sakit daw ng pain sa back. Uh, siguro before the operation, nagkaroon siya mayoma, and then back pain ang presentation ng kan sa kanya. Uh-uh. Yes. Uh, it's usually, depending kung how big it is, it's usually as pressure symptoms, no? And sometimes with myoma, it's low in vitamin D and calcium. So dapat baka osteopenic din siya or osteoporotic. So sometimes yung supplementation of more vitamins or green leafy vegetables can help bring back the bone mineral density. Mm-hmm. Oo. How about uh, itong question ni uh, Miss Marielle? Sabi niya, uh, wala na daw siyang menstrual period. So, at risk pa rin ba siya sa kanyang ano, mayoma? Natatakot siya. Ah, oh. so meron siyang mayoma? Wala siyang mayoma, pero natatakot siya baka magkaroon yata siya ng mayoma. Kasi wala, wala siyang... Kung hindi na siya nag, uh, nag-mens. So parang menopause na. Yes, uh uh-uh. so No, there's no chance. If wala siyang nararamdaman ngayon, uh pwede siyang magpa-check up yung pap smear. <laughs> Kasi ano, that's something. And then if ever hindi pa siya nagpa-ultrasound, then makikita. And then yung 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 kaba niya, tsaka worry niya mawawala din. Oh. So pa-check up siya. <laughs> Ito naman mula kay Miss Honey. Sabi niya, Doc Gina, ang galing niyo pong mag-discuss. Maraming salamat po. Ang dami po kaming natutunan. Salamat. Pwede po bang magkaroon ng mayoma kapag mahina ang monthly period? O mahina ang monthly period niya? Um, hindi naman, uh, hindi naman siya pwedeng kung sabihin na talagang walang chance kasi you are in a reproductive age level but yung mahina yung period mo it could be there's something different going on na baka sa ovary mo no na hormonal imbalance wow. so sometimes women with hormonal imbalance it's very rare na magkamayoma sila unless talagang hereditary oo oh, oo oh, oh. O, oh, ito yung question ni Ms. Uh, Montero at Ms. Lumbang. Halos pareho lang ang question nila. Kapag single or menopausal, need pa rin po bang magpa-check ka pati pops me? Kailangan ba kung single ka or menopausal ka, kailangan ba pa rin bang magpa-check up or magpa-pops me? 
Well, actually, Doc, at saka si Ma'am, thank you for your question. Uh, yung pagpapacheck up and pap smear, pag single, usually, correct me if I'm wrong, Doc, Michael, natutunan natin do during our rotation, <laughs> na kahit walang contact, at least once, parang 21 years old and above, magpapap smear. We have virginal or small speculums na pinapasok and then para na makita yung kwelyo ng matres, no? And it's something that you should do no kasi it's part of your health and your wellness no kasi remember we have genetics na predisposition tayo sa mga diseases na hindi natin alam din at saka yung cervical cancer hindi naman siya genetics but syempre you want to make sure you get the full ano check up and then pag menopause po uh yung pap smear at saka check up dapat at least till the age of I'll research and text it to Doc Mike. <laughs> I let go like up to 60 and then succeeding three years in the normal, 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 walang problem, then you could stop. Yeah. But you can't stop right away pag nagmenopause ka. Because that's like a risk factor for like cancers, no? Especially cervical cancer. Oh, oh. Ito last question natin mula kay Miss Aquino. Hi, Doc Gina. Ask ko lang po, may mayoma po Ako, pero maliit pa daw siya. Gusto na niyang ipaalis, pero advice ng doctor is palakin daw muna bago alisin. <laughs> is it right to do for any advice? Uh-oh. Baka ano, nagpapatawa yung doctor mo. For me, pag ganyan, sir, uh, ma'am, uh, pag maliit yung mayoma, you want to eat properly para hindi siya lumaki. Uh-oh. No, Para alagaan mo na lang na hindi siya lalaki. And we, we can't fight na fact na slow growing up po sila. Oo, oh, slow growing siya. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, depende rin kung anong size, hindi naman niya binanggit ni... Uh, yeah, ni... hindi naman niya binanggit. Oh, oh. At saka basta walang pressure symptoms, walang masakit, walang bleeding problems, oh, pwede oh. wait and see na lang. Sige, may, may dumagsak mga questions. Ha? Tignan lang natin ito. Okay. Hi, Doc. I was recently diagnosed with adenomyosis. I mm-hmm. have thoughts of undergoing hysterectomy. Uh, never had kids. Doctor suggested... Uh, my doctor suggested, uh, Mirena, what would you recommend? Something like that. That's a first. Yes. Pers- yeah. It's a very personal question for me, no? Because yeah. uh, I also have that. <laughs> um, with adenomyosis, mom, it's like a fibroid, but it, what it is, it's more painful and it's it's more aggressive than a myoma. Kasi dumudugo in between your muscle fibers. No? Uh, ang nangyayari, lumalaki siya bigla. Para siyang uh, hindi natin siya makokontrol. Hindi siya slow growing. Uh, medyo mas, ano, the longer you bleed, the bigger it gets. No? So yung adenomyosis, yes, hysterectomy is one of those uh, definitive na talagang yun ang pwede lang gawin. But with innovations po, no? There's a chance na if you're young, you want to have kids, you just have to, you know, find the right doctor that can do a technique in which can preserve your uterus. So if you really want to have a kid and you want to preserve your uterus and you're willing to go through the process, they have what they call Osaka technique, Osada technique. It's uh, created in Japan. And what they do for adenomyosis is they... If it's so large, parang medical treatment, pag hindi nag-respond, i, parang titrim nila yung matris mo the best they can to get it smaller. And then parang gaganyanin nila para magka-baby ka pa rin, no? So it's like something that's risky, but it can happen because, yeah, it can happen if that's what you want. And high food, the one I told you, the latest treatments, no? The high intensity uh, focused ultrasound, parang MRI, no? Uh, they have trials on adenomyosis also. Siyempre, diba? It's not, it's just new, but actually they've had trials and now they're marketing it for adenomyosis and myoma. Oh, there's one more. Ito, ito naman sabi ni Ms. Reyes. Good evening po, doctor. May age bracket po ba ang pagkakaroon ng mayoma? May kapitbahay ako na 40 plus na siya <laughs> na mag- malaman na may mayoma siya. Pero yung childhood friend ko namin ay age 17 nung nagka-mayoma. 
Oo, oh, oh, depende, di ba? If you could remember your childhood friend kung obi siya or meron yung nanay niya or meron yung lola niya. So, it, it came out faster kasi remember, we can't control our diet. So, kung, kung noon maraming spam, maraming bacon, ganon, di ba? Uh, your weight has something to do with it also. And then, the one about uh, kung... Ano yung isa? Sorry. <laughs> Yung 17 years old, kasi dalawang age, ano? Yes. 4 years old and 17 years old. Kung may once you, yeah, once you hit the reproductive age, no? Which is when you start menstruation hanggang menopause, uh, usually our hormones are high. Kung yung proven na, ano, natin suggestion na the hormones really play a role in that. So, the, the more hormonal you are between the ages of when you start menstruation, which is usually 15 hanggang 50 ang menopause, then there's a chance talaga na magkamayoma ka. If it runs in the family or yung diet mo, hindi siya maganda. <laughs> at bottom line, kailangan silang magpa-check every year para masubaybayan at malaman din nila. Oo. Yes, for me kasi, um, for a woman, they should have a health checkup every year para every birthday mo or every new year or every christmas just to make sure na healthy ka no kasi you're working so hard to to build the life that you know for your family and for yourself dapat medyo inaalagaan mo yun yung sarili mo so don't be scared to get a checkup yeah. so yun oh oh thank you so much ang daming natutunan ng ating mga kababayan sa iyo uh doctor yes. are so excited napaka Napaka-genuine mo pa rin. Napaka-sincere mo pa rin. Till now. Hindi Thank ka pwede nagbabago. And uh, doing this kind of uh, program for our OFWs at mag-guest ka sa amin. Napaka, napaka-sarap ng pakiramdam at nakakatulong tayo kahit pa paano. Particularly mm-hmm. our batch. Uh, sa, yes. Sa, uh, any, uh, sa, ram- sa mga viewers po natin, maraming salamat po sa mga tanong ninyo. If you have further questions po, Send lang po ninyo sa aming uh, chat box. We'll try to answer as much as possible yung mga questions. So don't forget po to share, to like, and subscribe para po sa next video. Or kung may mga kamag-anak po kayo na merong problem na mayuma or uh, OBGYN related, uh, please uh, share this video para po malaman. Ang susunod na question natin, Doktora, saan ka daw nagkiklinik? Uh, yeah, kasi maraming nagtatanong na if they are interested to see you, uh, particularly mga kababayan natin within the Pampanga area or mga OFWs na uh, maaring uuwi uh, soon, paano ba ang ano natin dyan, ang, uh, saan ang clinic natin? I have several clinics but ano, I'm, I'm always in the Medical City Clark. Uh, two to three times a week, but ngayon, Mondays and Saturdays, Monday morning, 9 to 12, and Saturdays from 2 to 4. And then I'm also at AUFMCs on Mondays and at the Accurate Diagnostic Center, Acumed in ang, uh, Santo Inchero, okay. on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Oh, I think sa Medical City, most accessible sa kanila kasi maraming... Uh via Clark Airport or International Airport, yung mga kababayan natin. Do they need to call for an appointment or anong... It's uh, nice if maybe you could give us a heads up. You could actually go on the FB page of the Medical City Clark and there's an appointment schedule there and you could just look for my name or the doctor of your choice and you click and then it'll tell you the schedule and then it'll tell you it, you could you could ask for an appointment and then they will notify the secretaries na may nagpa-appoint. Mm. So, uh, ayan. Maraming masaraming salamat, Dr. Gina. Do you want to greet anyone, our friends, or baka may gusto kang batiin? Sige, the floor is yours. <laughs> oh, no. I just want to say thank you to everybody and especially to you. It's one of my, I know, one of my goals to help educate, no? Especially women's health. And also, I want to thank the listeners for actually being uh, now active in the conversation and don't be afraid to ask no and also uh with the fibroids kasi we can do something we can be it can be preventable or at least in diag- in, in in making it not grow so big no and take charge to health natin no so women's empowerment uh health natin is important regular exercise enough sleep 
proper vitamins, uh, more green leafy vegetables, a healthy normal BMI, yung mga, and then they have this thing called a fibroid diet. You could look it up on the internet and usually it just says eat more green and fresh, less processed, less alcohol, everything I've mentioned. But if you're interested in asking more questions about it, it's at the usafibroid.com. So medyo, ano siya, it has, it, it, the, the article came out July of 2020 and it has like, you know, what, what to avoid if you have like phytoestrogens, yung mga soya, soya, ganon, yung mga added sugars, ganon, yung salt, sobrang, ano, uh, saturated, highly processed foods, no? And then yung different kinds of meals, like Mediterranean diet, yung mga ganon. So we should take charge, <laughs> take charge the health natin and don't be afraid to, ano, ask. Yes, napakaganda pong tip at advice mula kay Dr. Gina yung sinabi niya. I hope po lagi niyo pong pangalagaan ang sarili natin. Uh, wag po tayong matakot. Visit po tayo sa ating doctors uh, at least once a year po. Uh, mga kababayan, lalo na po yung mga kababayan natin dito sa Hong Kong, mga OFWs, uh, mag-ingat po lagi. So with that, Dr. Gina, maraming salamat. Uh, you. <laughs> you, can, uh, ano na, you can turn off the video na. You can leave the, ano, kakausapin ko lang yung mga kababayan natin. Thank you, uh, thank so, you. So, so maraming salamat. Salamat. Ay, next time ulit, mag-guest ka ulit sa amin. Thank okay. you, salamat. Thank you lang, <laughs> maraming salamat, Dr. Gina. No. So ayan, napakaganda na naman ng ating topic uh, na pinag-usapan ngayong gabi with Dr. Gina Masangkay. Sabi nga po niya is um, eat healthy at least once a year. Uh, once a year kung may time po tayo, pumunta po tayo sa ating mga doktor para po magpatingin. And uh, if you have further questions po, please let us know so that uh, we could show the questions to Dr. Gina uh, Masangkay. And ang clinic po niya nasa The Medical City Clark. Uh, tignan nyo na lang po yung Facebook uh, ng uh, The Medical City Clerk at hanapin po yung uh, name po ni Dr. Gina Masangkay. Or you could replay this video kung ano po yung schedule. Uh, ano pala ang ano? Yung pong uh, mga kababayan natin, after this live video, live stream video, you can comment uh, because we'll be having a raffle. Magpaparaffle po kami ng perfume, water bottle, uh, Ano pa ba mga parapol natin? May pang BP po tayo at mga uh, gift certificates from supermarket. Uh, siguro yung perfume po muna, uh, yung power bank at saka yung water bottle. Sulat lang po ninyo, mag-comment lang po kayo na kung uh, perfume po siya, kanino nyo po ibibigay yung perfume. Uh, sana po yung mga taga Hong Kong lang po muna kasi mahirap po kung saan natin uh, papadala. Yung mga viewers natin from Hong Kong, subscribers natin from Hong Kong, just write your comment, any comment, Kung bakit po perfume, kanino nyo po ibibigay yung perfume. At uh, mamimili po kami towards the end of this month, uh, around third uh, Sunday of this uh, month, September. At ibibigay ko po sa inyo yung perfume. Iaabot ko po personal yung perfume or yung water bottle or yung uh, power bank po para sa inyo. So abangan nyo po ngayong Friday, isa na naman uh, magandang topic ang pag-uusapan natin is all about sa mga kababayan natin, na nahihirapan matulog uh, particularly yung tinatawag na insomnia. Yun po ang pag-uusapan natin ngayong uh, Friday uh, September 4 so abangan nyo po yung susunod na episode natin ngay ngayon. So with that maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. This is Dr. Mike Be safe, be healthy and uh, stay happy and uh, be nice uh, to everyone So magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat and have a great night. Salamat po